Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a spring seasonal pre-match interview. As you can already see, 
The man sitting over here to my left, Mr. Soul Raver. What's up, buddy? How you feeling today? Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm doing great, man. Um, thanks for inviting me over for this little chat. Yeah, man. Love it that uh, you got, you know, the time because I know it's Saturday. You know, we're a day ahead. We're, we're, we're pre-recording this and this is awesome. I know you guys have a lot of things on on deck. You're preparing for a match against TL. Um, I know we talked a little bit off camera about uh, what to expect from TL and all that good stuff. But before we jump into the actual match itself, I think the audience at home would be interested. I'm interested in knowing a little bit about who is Team Phoenix. Can you just give us a little history about, you know, how you guys yeah. came to be? Of course. Um, Team Phoenix, they founded themselves out of the 91st Panzer Grenadier, you know, the the one team w who were the, playing the, with the, 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 the try, the yeah. three-way, the whatever you want to call them. Right. It's They founded themselves out of uh, this team, so they're kind of... It's fun that we played against them in the third round of qualifiers. Familiar and, names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Team Phoenix, they uh, found, I think, they found it in October 2020. I'm not 100% for sure, but that's what I, <laughs> I have in my head right now, and I think it's right. I think so, you're yeah. pretty close to aggregate. I, I, I was telling you, remember, um, the, the irony of this match was when I played comp about a year ago in this spring seasonal, um, about a year ago, it was the 20th Panzer Grenadiers ver and, and the line. We, we, we joined together and we played you guys, believe it or not, Team Phoenix on Foy. So I just found it, you know, I don't know, Destiny has a fun, yeah. funny thing. You know, anyway, um, so <clears throat> you guys have been around for a while, obviously, and you've had some success in the seasonal and you're going up against a team who I know because you're commander, you've spent a lot of time scouting, researching, planning for these, uh, for these guys. And uh, let's just talk a bit, a little bit about what your expectations are when you see these guys on Utah Beach tomorrow. Well, yeah, of course uh, we need to scout some, you know, you don't want to go blind into a matchup like that on a seasonal like this. Um, but Taken, like, uh, taking the map we were playing on, I think our benefit was pretty good. It's what, it was one of the maps we wanted to play them. Um, we're playing on Utah as allies, which is, I think, on two of the three, maybe all three of the points, it's the favorite side, just based on the... Played this last week against Trigger, and the result wasn't very good. They had a pretty One four, bad yeah. start, um, and you guys have the better preferred start, right? I mean, yeah, I mean they're really good at preparing their opener, so we need to take care of that. Um, it's going to be a challenge to get the first cap, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So yeah, like like we said, it's gonna be uh, tomorrow Sunday, uh, three p.m. Eastern Standard, nine p.m. CEST time, German time. Uh, so let's just get into a little bit about the match, the style of play TL brings to the table. I know you've watched them play. How would you describe TL's style? So, um, I didn't just watch the uh, trigger match because it would be just one match and you can take all the information or a lot of information out of one match because you can have a day off and uh, or whatever uh, off day sorry not a day off off day um but their style in general i think they're pretty aggressive they can they have very good good tankers pretty conservative at some point but they're pretty good we need to take care and respect their tanks for sure um and also they're already men already always <laughs> Just, so, you know, messes everybody up. <clears throat> yeah, Artie is a, uh, a huge factor. The team that can keep them online the longest is is definitely got a huge advantage. But uh, the keys to your winning, you're, if you had to pick three things that you could say, you know what, if we do one, two, and three really well, this is going to significantly increase our chances of winning. I think yeah. you said the, the start. I think we all agree. Everybody knows it's all about the start. Yeah. It's like my first one is definitely the the opener, the first five to ten minutes to get it good to um, 
have maybe have chapel even that would be the dream but um even on that we need to have a very good opener be stay focused you know that's the first one the second one would be keeping our rd alive and taking out theirs <laughs> for sure right off the start right it's I think that's what it's, everybody thinks, you know, let's just get that recon tank down there and just cause as much havoc as possible. Yeah, or snipe from different lineups or, you know, there's different ways to getting rid of them, but definitely you need to get rid of them. Now, I, I know we didn't talk about this, but it just popped into my head. I just recently watched a match where 116th played Trirax. 116th was on the beach. They were allies and they had positioned one of their light tanks to a place where they can literally shoot from the beach into the German HQ and hit the artillery. I don't know if you guys know about this. It's it's something that I've seen, but I'm sure you guys have something up your sleeve off the start. Your strategy has probably been gone over, over and over. So I know you guys are prepared, but that is the meta. Get these guys offline any way possible, as quickly as possible. Yeah, and as long as possible. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> The whole match, hopefully. Now, the last thing yeah. I would like to just mention, you said uh, uh, your tankers, you feel very confident in them. And I know I've watched your tankers play. I cast your match when we played, uh, or you guys played against the Finns. Um, talk a little bit about your tankers and just give these guys the recognition they deserve. Yeah, so um, the match against the Finns, it was a little rough for our tankers. That's, you can take that one single match. But... Um, in general, they're insane at the moment. I just, you know, they, they put a lot of effort into their tank strategy and we're communicating a lot about different things. Then we have, uh, yeah, there's one tank crew. They're kind of, they're new players in our um, clan and they, uh, they are established pretty well, I think. They're insane tankers. They, what was they, the name you gave them? Uh, I remember you saying. Was the it? item tank squad. Yeah, the, the item tank. I don't know what yeah. the significance of item, I mean, but... It's just their name. I don't know why they, they put that name, but it's just their name. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So, moving over to infantry, I know you got some great ground impounders. Yeah, um, definitely. We have um, our meat grind squad. It's called the Saints squad. Um, there's... Uh, all of them are great players. There, there's That's a very disciplined and well-trained squad all in all but their uh squad lead knispel he's insane put a lot of, a lot of uh, effort in the trainings and uh, even as part of the member uh is part of the strategy group we have um then there's one of our best players top fragger it's it's uh his name is fullback you might yeah, want to catch an eye on I him i definitely will be like I said, I, I told you, I had seen him a lot in the uh, the Finns match, so I'm expecting to see him and another guy you mentioned. Yeah, Kaiser. And both of those two guys, Kaiser is not in this squad, he's in a in one of our flanking squads. But um, in all three qualifier rounds of uh, the season we had, uh, Phoenix guys were top fraggers on infantry. It's Twice it was fullback and once it was Kaiser. So they These all, the guys I think, you just let loose. Go for it. Yeah. Kill they just, everything I don't know. in your way. And, that, yeah, and they, that's got to be fun for them. But um, on the flip side, and, and we know how important it is, I love to command. You're our commander, um, the defender. You know, we mentioned uh, Jesus Christ. He's your yes. guy. He's your defensive coordinator on that backfield, that back line. Yeah, Cheesy, we call him. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jesus Christ, he's uh, very good. He's... Um, his abilities to lead his squad in like tense, tense situations or like where he's almost getting overwhelmed, but kind of, I don't know how, but he manages to uh, fight back the enemy. These are the uh, unsung heroes that you, these are the guys yeah. you depend on. These guys are the eyes and the ears. You, you make calls based on what the information you get from these guys and, and yeah. from him in particular. Yeah, we're... Not in constant communication, because you don't want to overload the command chat or whatever. But we are definitely in a lot of... We're communicating a lot. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So They're great. <laughs> um, I, I know you got some planning to do. I know, I'm glad I got you in here for a few minutes. You, you probably have a scrimmage or something going on later today. Getting tuned up for tomorrow's match. 
Um, any closures, any shout outs? Do you want to plug something or just yeah. mention anything? Um, um, I don't forget, I won't forget my RD guys to cut, shout out them, like Captain Germany, our oh, RD. How can we do that? Uh, that's that's yeah. a brain fart for me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, right. Kevin sorry, Germany. I apologize, you already guys. You guys are the difference makers. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I have thought about them. It's Captain Germany. Uh, he's organizing all the RD stuff, and then there's Sadie. He's doing um, all the RD defense things, like figuring out how to block lineups, how to you know putting putting the, all the, the builds or whatever. The yeah, uh, everything. Down everything he's insane like Architect. shout outs to them i always say yeah. i love the elaborate uh fortresses they build around these um artillery uh batteries it's just so freaking amazing and on the beach it's going to be even more because there's literally other than a, maybe a belgian block here or there he's going to have to create this 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 impregnable defense around the arty it's going to be awesome to yeah. watch. And the Americans can't build Belgian gates, sadly. Oh, yes. Oh, be, uh, right, right, right. They got the little uh, <coughs> the, tank obstacles, whatever they are. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Sorry, yeah? No, I was going to say, you, you you know, you have your Discord. How do people get in touch with you guys? Who do they talk to? Yeah, um, you you can find it on the seasonal Discord itself. It's in the Teams um, thing. But if you just want to join our Discord... You just um, join discord.gg slash team.phoenix and um, just, or it's without a dot. I'm not 100% sure, you might want to check. But um, you just message one recruiter of ours if you're interested in joining and they might um, contact you. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, listen, <laughs> Soul Raver, Soul Raver. I'm going to call that out a couple times. Soul Raver. Good luck tomorrow, dude. I, I'm looking forward to casting the match. Um, it's going to be a barn burner. I know it. Two great teams. Like I'm, I'm excited because I know how evenly you guys are matched up, and TL's thirsty to show that they, you know, they they didn't look very solid, and I know they want to come back and prove to to the people in this uh, in this uh, main stage to the teams in the main stage that. That match last week was not who they are, and guess who they're they're gonna come and guess what? You're you're the team that they're gonna look to get that respect back because they, they didn't do well. I'm sure they're disappointed, mm -hmm. but you guys on the other hand have a lot to prove. You're coming off a loss as well, so best of luck. Um, Thanks. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, that'll about wrap it up. Hey guys, HLL Gadarian tomorrow, three p.m. Eastern Standard, nine ES. Tea time, Soul Raver, right over there, HLL Gadarian, signing off. Have a good one. See you guys. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome, everybody. Spring seasonal pre-match interview. And today I am joined in the booth by the tank commander extraordinaire, I like to call him, uh, Mr. How Do You Do, Mr. Do. How are you, sir? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the interview. How's it going? I'm uh, happy to be here. Hell yeah, brother. Let's get this started, man. So, um, talking a little bit off camera before we started this and trying to figure out how should we open it, but let's just get the, let's get the stuff out of the way. Let's just talk about what TL is, share a little bit with the audience, who they are, what your drive is, what your focus is. Uh, we are a Hell at Loose clan. We primarily focus on Hell at Loose. We play some other games, but our primary focus is Hell at Loose. Um, we're a mix of casual and competitive. Um, I'm mostly on the competitive side, uh, but we're always looking for more people to come join us if you're interested in competitive play in Hell at Loose. And how do they find you, Mr. Do? Where, where do they go uh, to go On Discord, you? we are uh, discord.gg slash the line. Uh, fairly easy to get in, so. Yeah, basic, basic stuff. So anyway, let's let's move on now that we've got that kind of covered. Let's talk about um, last week. I know it's a little bit of a sore subject, but we all have to go back and look at the tape. We'll say, what did you learn from when you watched um, Trigger? What what was the, the, the main takeaway? What did you learn? Because you're basically playing Phoenix on the same map, same side tomorrow. 
Um, we made a, a lot of mistakes that I think will be fixed for this weekend. Um, we ran into some problems with uh, losing some people that were uh, like our, our commander. We lost our commander, so we had to replace him. So we had a lot of strategy issues, and mm. hopefully mm -hmm. all that will be fixed. Uh, Coltrane is coming up to our commander position, so... Coltrane, for you guys that don't know, that's our buddy Coltrane. He's going to be the commander. Also known as Roscoe by you. Roscoe P. Coltrane, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, he is an experienced commander, and hopefully... Uh, we'll get the strategy worked out yeah i was gonna say you, you you probably had a few players at a position or maybe guys that are just weren't comfortable in the positions they were so you, you made some roster changes and, and uh, hopefully that works out well for you uh yeah it should hopefully our new strategy that we're trying to implement will fix all those issues Great. So, um, next question I have for you is Phoenix. What 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 research? What time have you spent? You know, going over what they do well. Like what jumps out at you? What concerns you? Um, what 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 do you? How are you planning on, on on beating this 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 team tomorrow? So our group always watches all the tapes in extreme detail. <laughs> we like to. Uh, Inferno likes to run our debriefs for weeks long. So and, once uh, again, it's so crazy. Everybody that you mentioned, I just so happen to have all these guys loaded up because these are some of the guys, and I'll plug the uh, FNF uh, Friday Night Fight sponsored by GOF, if you don't know about that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah but a lot of these guys that you're mentioning are, are, are regulars on that, so I just so happen to have them all loaded up. But yes, say, Inferno, he's one of your guys. He's uh, he's the tech he constantly He constantly likes to run... Uh, intricate detailed debriefs of every game tape we can get our hands on yeah i love um, it we usually go over my kind of guy i love him <laughs> yeah so we usually him. go over a lot of you know what we think will work and won't work and we put yeah. a lot of time into it yeah i guess that's the uh the planning board or whatever you want to call it you know go over go over the material and, and see see what you guys come up with so with that said what major adjustments outside of just roster changes were there any um, you know, tactical, strategic things that you want to tweak. You're literally going to be playing this map again. So what, you know, what did you do wrong in terms of, you know, garrison placement or was it OP placement or was it communications? Like what, what are some of the big things that you're not going to, uh, or what, what are some of the things you're going to do differently this time around? Um, so without giving anything away, we know exactly what we did wrong and we are making some big changes to fix that um and hopefully it'll show uh against them this weekend i mean they're a good team and we don't want to uh yeah you don't want to tip your cap or tip your hat to that uh, and we, we also don't want to like go into it thinking we're going to beat them immediately I, I hate going to the games thinking we're just going to steamroll people when every team that's in this is a good team Everyone in the seasonal is great, and um, we should always be going into the games prepared to beat them. Yeah, if you're not a little bit worried, um, I, I always go into every match a little bit nervous, and I think that's good a good a good sign. I don't want to be so calm that you know I'm not worried. You know, I want to be able to play my best and you know always stay sharp. Um, but now that you guys have kind of have your strategy in mind and it's in place and you're ready to go for tomorrow and i'll just say tomorrow is 3 p.m eastern standard uh hll Gadarin, catch me on that uh i'll be streaming the tl side um and then for you europeans that are tuning in is 2100 cest time german time um let's go and talk about now some of the impact players would start off with infantry i know you got some real good ones on your team oh yeah we've got a you know, the Inferno, Bloody Nine, Streets, Chicken and Waffle. I mean, we've, we have a, a lot of good shooters. Um, we've got a lot of good tanks. Uh, we, we, I feel like our team is really stacked in that department for shooting. Um, and hopefully it'll all come together for uh, tomorrow. Talk about your guy, Dark Ninja. What's, uh, what's uh, his... He's one of the uh, guys oh, yeah, that you might uh, not ordinarily hear, but he's important, at least to you and some of the tankers. Oh, uh, yeah. He's uh, in charge of our tank support type of group that we've 
created. Um, since he's taken that over and has started doing that, our, it has been a, a godsend for the tanks. It has been great. And I really appreciate him doing that. Well, yeah, we all know how tanks can literally dominate a map. And the longer your guys are in the positions you need to be in. I mean, between the AT guns, the the, the suicide runs that people are charging at you with uh, satchel charges and... You know, and then we haven't even discussed tanks. I mean, everybody's basically after you. You guys are the, the targets. Everybody uh, will just pepper call. You guys are the shit magnets. You are just, everybody's looking for you. So knowing that you've got uh, a unit dedicated to protecting your six, you know, obviously leads to the confidence. And you were talking to me about confidence. Like, even though you guys lost 4-1 to a, a really quality opponent in Trigger, your confidence is still up there. I mean, you guys are expecting, you know, to play really well and, and win. Yeah, we always like to have confidence. Uh, I just don't like to have arrogance in it. The uh, Trigger was a really good team, um, and they they beat us. And hopefully we'll come back from it and be stronger for it. Yep. Moving down now, you've got tankers. Obviously, we have the tank Jesus that everybody, you know, affectionately calls, you know, Kalito. Um we know we know what he can do, and, and yourself, obviously, um, one of the uh, better tankers in all of Hell at Loose. But some of the guys that you want to give a little love to, who don't really get that attention, who would they be? Uh, in Kalito's tank, it's Grecker and Lazy. Um, in my tank, it's Bossman and Atrocity. You, you know, those usually it's the commanders that get called out, but like we can't, the commanders can't really do as much without. The two other guys in our tank who do a lot of the work. Definitely. And not to be um, forgotten, the, these guys are, I think, the heart and soul of every good Hell at Loose match, and that's the artillery. I know you've got one guy in mind who's the architect of basically putting down the blueprints and making sure everybody's doing their job and the guns are at the right positions. And, you know, however you have it structured, you got three guns and who's doing one on each gun. That's your that's your guy, uh, Satchel Sloth. Uh, yeah, he puts in a lot of work and does all the artillery strategizing, and he's he's in charge of artillery, and he does good work. Yeah, um, I didn't really see any problems with you guys with your artillery when you played trigger. It looked like for most of the match, even when you guys were pressed to your last point, artillery was still up and running, so that's a, an attribute to the job that Sloth does on that back line. Um, however, I, I did say this in the um, other interview I had with Soul Raver from Phoenix. I, I had watched a match recently with uh, 116th and Trirex, and 116th had positioned one of their light tanks on the beach. I'm not sure exactly where, might have been on a beachhead somewhere, but I know they were able to shoot into the German main base and basically suppress and take out the artillery. I'm not sure if you're aware of that tactic. But um, I'm sure whatever Sloth has, he's prepared for whatever, um, whatever's going to come at him. So, um, so uh, yeah, there's a, uh, we've seen a lot of the, I mean, we came up with the artillery uh, shots for that uh, map and um, we've seen a bunch of different ones. None of them have been as good as our secret one that we haven't really, sh it hasn't been shown where it is, but. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, probably a lot of that stuff is done behind door, closed doors in, in your in your private practices, so. It's one of those things where as soon as uh, one person finds out where that is in a comp scene, it kind of spreads and then that's just used by everybody. Yeah. Luckily ours hasn't quite been found yet, so people are using subpar ones which is good for us yeah i was gonna say and hopefully some of the casters don't catch and give away all your secrets but it's just part of the game <laughs> we're, we're out there looking to to find out what what works and what doesn't work but anyway um so like i said tomorrow three o'clock it's going to be team phoenix versus the line uh hll Gadarian on twitch if you guys want to check me out i'll be casting that um also um let me get his name right. I don't want to don't want to mess him up. But uh, there's another streamer. Uh, get his name right. His name his name is C Raptor will be uh, casting it from the side of the Team Phoenix. So definitely check him out as well. Uh, anybody you want to shout out before we uh, wrap this bad boy up, Mister Do? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, big thanks to arguably the third best squad leader in North America stepping up to take over commander spot for us. Hopefully uh, we'll get stuff done with him. That would be Mr. Pico Roscoe train. Pico train. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and yeah, the whole seasonal organization and, and it's been great. Mr. Heidegger and, uh, and, and Jan there. and all the, all the people behind the scenes that are putting all this work in. Yeah, they're doing a lot of work and I'm really appreciate it. Yeah, man, we're, we're, we're all working here, man. We're all one community making this thing an amazing event. And uh, yeah, lot, lots of lots of people behind the scenes putting in work. So it's great to have you on, Mr. Do. Good luck tomorrow. I'll be casting you. Hopefully you guys come out with a dub and uh, we'll see how things happen. Maybe we'll get you on a post-game uh, interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Thank you for making time for me. Uh, we'll catch you guys uh, tomorrow, 3 o'clock. Gadarian, Mr. Dew, he's right over there above my shoulder. You guys take care. Have a good one. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Round two of the 2022 spring seasonal hosted by the Wolves of War. I'm Gadarian. I'll be your shoutcaster for today uh, between the line and Team Phoenix. This map will be played on Utah Beach. Um, so just to let you guys know what you had seen, that was just pre-recorded material. I had interviewed both, uh, Mr. Dew and Soul Raver, uh, yesterday. So I just figured you guys might appreciate, you know, a little behind the scenes look, a little peek into what they're planning and, and what they are, uh, expecting to see from their opponent. So anyway, just moving forward, I'm already in game and... Like I said, 99 loaded, or I didn't say 99 loaded. We have 99 in match. So ordinarily, uh, I would say NA teams are not on time, but I'm hoping this gets up and running soon. We're about three minutes away from three o'clock. Um, I guess while we have the time, we could just pull up the map, the TAC map. We are, let's see, here we go, TAC map. So. I'll be casting from behind the line, the German side, and on the left. And Team Phoenix will be coming up off the beaches. They will be allies. Um, nothing that we haven't gone over at least a bunch of times. WN4, uh, the top spawn point, or the top strong point, um, a slight uh, allied lean, chapel the same. Uh, when it comes to WN7, I believe Axis might have a slight advantage. Uh, on getting in there off the rip. Um, in terms of what these teams need to do, um, coming off losses, both teams, the TL played this literally one week ago against Trigger, and they came out the loser on that end. 4-1, uh, playing as Axis again, so they're literally getting to run this back a second time. And for Team Phoenix, late, they lost last week to... Um, a powerhouse in, in core. So obviously both these teams are looking to, you know, get off the schneid, so to speak, and, and get that first W and, and, and get the ball rolling in the right direction. So um, yeah, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time going over this. And, and you guys also noticed that I am without my co-caster, uh, TL Pepper, who is in game, in server right now, he'll be playing um, he's the uh, logistical uh, dude for uh, the line. He's the guy who takes care of all that back end garrison placement, and he's he's, he's basically your back end coordinator. So um, we'll be rolling dolo, but that's all good. So yeah. With that being said, I do I do have some other stuff I would like to show the main stage and and some of the results. Pull those up. So. Earlier this morning, I came and woke up and I saw that Core and Trigger had played on Purple Heart Lane. And I was expecting uh, a Core win, obviously, but I was, in, I was more interested in seeing how they would win. And honestly, it was a 3-2, 90-minute, like, like dogfight. I mean, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't um, a very comfortable win. Uh, Core is, you know, the team that you expect to win always an impressive fashion. Uh, 
30 minute matches is kind of like the norm for these guys but trigger um is for real they uh they beat a, a good tl team and to lose 3-2 to arguably the best team in hell at loose is really saying something for uh for trigger so uh in terms of the rest of the matches we've got a ton on the slate we've got Wolves of War playing STDB. Eight Second Airborne is playing Blacklist. That's going to be an awesome, that's a very tight match. The conglomerate, the NA conglomerate of Esprit de Corps, OP, and BHB versus 116. That's going to be an exciting, tight match. You know, two, two I, would, I would say, top five teams. And rounding out, we've got Phoenix. Excuse me, Phoenix. We've got... Uh, uh, UFR and EG, and uh, obviously we're casting the TL Phoenix. Then there's Finns who played the Polish team. They won in 30 minutes, I want to say, uh, yesterday. Impressive fashion, 5 uh, 0 I believe it was, I want to say Purple Heart Lane as well. And then we have Trirex going against 5 uh, 0 uh, BST2. So anyway, that's that kind of rounds out the 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 maps or the the matches for today uh we got a flip i'm trying to I'm trying to see we might be on time i'm gonna i was told i have to jump in a certain squad so i'm looking for mange just give me a second while i find this guy and there he is jump in there grab my Grab my handy dandy rifle. So once again, as per usual, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all the camera work, set it all up. So. <laughs> Let's see. Da -da. Okay, and we're off. So, let me just get over to the live scene for you guys. Let's hop in there. And as you can see, our midpoint will be WN7. So, I think a slight axis lean, like I said, off the jump. Um, again, the meta is always going to be how does artillery fair and this is this is this is how you either win or lose matches how you place these blueprints really matter i mean they're just there's a whole process to this uh you know shoot shoot your guy in the head so it's a quicker <laughs> uh respawn get get your supplies get your things built mange is the the coordinator back here of getting this all set up again 25 seconds before we go live and it looks like tl coltrane being our commanders looking to go across the top probably build garrison in in d5 looking for top map control we've got tl pepper who's our logistics guy he's also looking to build garrison probably in the between the six seven and i think this is where a bulk we're just going to have a, a mad rush in from the southern point so let's let's get down to the southern half. Let's jump on these transport trucks as they roll out. There we go. And we're set to go. Let's go, baby. TL versus Team Phoenix, man. Utah Beach. So, Commander dropping supplies preemptively. You definitely want to have top map control. Artillery's already got their shots blasting. Hit, hitting those pre-sided targets. So we're just trying to see what Team Phoenix does. If their artillery is successful, if they take out any one of these transports, again, the start is absolutely critical to any... And here they come. And it looks like... They might escape, TL might escape any kind of 
damage. Looking like they're going to get most of their players in the fight. And the start looks pretty good for TL. Lots of guys in the hard point. 25% cap. Very aggressive. I, I'm so used to seeing, yes, we've got Atrocity. We've got Boss Man, Mr. Do in, in the looks. The way to win this is to be aggressive. I watched Core play this a number of times, and they, they know how important it is to get those tanks engaged. Now, for Team Phoenix, I think this, this little house right here is super important. If they can maintain they can maintain a presence in that area they can get their way into the house where we have chicken and waffles and so lucky Phoenix artillery is starting to land with some success now they did team Phoenix temporarily halt cap progress but TL back on the climb 75% Just kind of pull back just a touch. Let's just get an idea where. Looks like Team Phoenix is having to come up from the Iron Cross and make their way in through the trenches. But I'm feeling pretty, pretty confident, unless there's some real crazy artillery strikes. TL might get the 3 2 off the start on WN7. And it's just about finish. There it is, it's official. TL jumping out early. Here we go. Let's get that let's get that scoreboard up for you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Three, two. Three, two allies. Excuse me, I said allies, I said I meant to say axis. So a good start, much better start than last week for the line. Tank play, this is pretty much where you expect to see your Panzer IV. This is not unfamiliar to me. I'm used to seeing Panzer IVs park it and suppress anything that's going to come across from, we'll say, the eight row for Team Phoenix. This, this is what I'm talking about. That Panzer IV is in a great position. Now, what I've seen other teams do is build, I've, I've seen people build uh, pack guns right here because we all know, you know the tank is gonna peek out that entire time. So I wonder what Team Phoenix strategy is to get in. Yeah, and you can just see the tank is just having a field day. These poor guys are having to go in through these choke points between the barbed wire. My guess is controlling, and I'm going to say this is Grandma's house, just to you know, point that out to you. Grandma's house is not visible. It's kind of where Knocked is, where we see Knocked. All right, this is very important real estate on the map. Controlling Grandma's house is one of the biggest jump-off points to getting into WN7. So we're starting to see what was a supply drop for allies. They're trying to get that red zone garrison up. Okay, it's dropped in behind. I think that might be recon's job out there. And then maybe not immediately suppressing artillery, but to hopefully build back garrisons on that supply drop. Because it's going to be hard to crack that nut. Once you allow TL enough time to set up proper defenses in and around, WN7, it's going to be hard to get in. And then when you've got a bunch of guys like Cafe Mocha, Chicken and Waffles, if these guys are pressing out and doing that peripheral defense, obviously moving into Grandma's house with Noct, it's, it's going to be tough for Team Phoenix to, to kind of wedge themselves in. Now, one of the big players from the trigger match, we're just going to grab onto him. This is uh, Streets. Had a monster game last week against Trigger. 
something like 122 kills. Guy is lethal with that K98. Now, here's fullback. I remember from the interview with Soul Raver, he is one of their their top fraggers. He's holding that uh, grease gun. I'm going to see he's trying to get into Grandma's. Runs into Nicki Minaj, the one and only. Gets the better of that. Again, I'm thinking where where is the best way to approach WN7. I, I, I'm not seeing it coming across the, the 8. This is what we're looking. We're looking west. This is at the bottom of the map. Now, did they build the AT gun? No, they haven't. I think they're going to need to get rid of that tank. And I'm not hearing much in the way of artillery anymore from Team Phoenix. Let me just take a quick look at the map. I would like to see... No, TL does not have anybody on the back line yet, so Phoenix Artillery should be up and, and, and running effectively. However, I'm not really hearing much at the moment. Now, what do we got just peeking in there? Is that... That's Unique, Grecker, and Kalido. And you got Bloody Nine and SL watching the six. They've done a much better job. I remember from the core... The core, the trigger match... Uh, TL had a hell of a time keeping their tankers up because infantry support wasn't there. Today, different story. Bloody Nine is just trailing, being close to Panzer IV. So, once again, big, big picture. Let's we'll take a look at garrison situation. We have one on the point, the hard point, the strong, strong point in WN7. Two just behind. Is that right behind? Yes, that's perfect. All you uh, new squad leaders, make sure you don't place it in the uh, in the E or the F because if you happen to lose WN7, you lose the garrison. These guys, great placement. Garrison placement is solid. Uh, again, you want top map control. This is important. Hell, you might even want to go up even further and drop one in uh, WN4 and control the top area in the G and come down hill that way. But... We're going to get on Hill 5 because we have a bombing run. Let's try and get over there. Let's just grab that and follow it in. And I think Inferno and his squad are looking to follow this up. Am I right? Yes. Here's Inferno. He's following up. Let's see how effective the bombing run is. Did they get the angle right? You know, and by the looks of it, that's a pretty effective bombing run. Now, that might be enough to open the door for Inferno and his squad to get in. So, yeah, so here, this is what we've got. We've got O'Leroy. We've got Inferno. They're making... The, yeah, this is this is not a probing attack. This is... This is, they're, they're committed. They're feeling pretty confident, and, I'm, and you can just see it from the map yourself. Nothing lit up red around WN7. Tanks are, are they even on the map? Uh, not really seeing tank, but I mean, they're feeling really confident about their infantry play. They have the, the sector completely um, controlled. Let's see my silly little titties. Here we go, silly. What do you got today for me, buddy? You got any highlights? Looking for a highlight. You got something? Takes out, was that Lilo? Leo? On the march. Gotta make sure you have your OP down, SL. So he, he just took one. Now, where the heck did that come from? That might have been, was that Seb? That looked like Seb got... <clears throat> Let's roll back around, perhaps, and just in a blink of an eye, just like that, we've got nice concentration of Phoenix players in the G7, which is just outside of the soft cap in F7. So, yeah, definitely this is the preferred way of getting in. Bit by bit, you need to creep in. Ultimately, the goal will be to take over Grandma's house. But listen, you got sieves. 
and played against that guy. You don't want to you want to go one on one against him too often. But again, look, smart. This is this is and Kalito preaches this all the time. Placement of tanks is so important and he's getting tipped off infantry. Obviously, he's getting pings forcing team Phoenix to have to readjust their attack, but these guys are stuck. They're just trying to and it's not going to work. <laughs> without tank support. So I'm not, I haven't seen much in the way of allied. I haven't seen a 76. So I'm kind of curious what's happening. So they're they're pushing out and I'm curious which way they're going. Knocked. Dark Ninja and Daniel are moving into the G8, which is, there's really not much going on there. Unless they're trying to establish garrison, perhaps, in the area right off of the beach by Uncle Red for something later. I, I don't know. Well, let's just get in here. This looks like a nice little, got a garrison, Phoenix garrison. Bit exposed, quite a bit exposed. Back and forth exchanges, but it looks like TL is making that march, you know, east. You know, these guys here are just making their way. I, I would like to think they're going to hook up the probably the H column would make more sense. Make sure there's no garrisons back in and around. So let's see where they go. Follow them north. Now, TL is clearly feeling confident because they're they're moving quite a bit of their resources up and quite from a long distance. I'm not sure I like marching from way down in the eight. I would like them, if you're really serious about attacking, unless you're looking to sweep and clear the sectors below, um, you got to go a little deeper, in my opinion. You don't want to get in too narrow. See how that works out for them. There we go. We finally have our first allied tank. It's a 76, I believe. It is indeed. Who is in it? We've got uh Ulf can canister and shirt. Now this would you like to see? Your squad leaders, White Death, taking that cover behind tank. So He's not going to get satcheled. And the SL, well, he's bugging out. Don't go too far. Let's go big map. Let's just get an idea. So 76 is just south of Hill 5. I'm trying to think. This is where TL Kalito is. So they, these guys are not that far. I mean, maybe 200 meters. Now you've seen Kalito start to rotate his tank to face. Maybe he's got a ping. Let's see, he's somewhere out there. It's just starting to look like they're winning some of these exchanges. Cafe Mocha gets dropped. Hobbs goes down. Now, now can, can the infantry continue to move up? We've got two tanks now. This is, this is very smart. Team Phoenix tankers, we definitely know TL respects these guys. I know that these guys are quality tankers. So 
The 76 and it looks like the, the Sherman, Ernst Vexter, and uh, Werbeck. Yeah. Werber. That's your name. Werber. They are just going to put as many rounds downrange, cause as much suppression for the infantry field the squad leader to uh, move west. I think that's the play. And you can just see these guys are slowly starting to close the distance. They've now taken over this broken building and we're just outside of the soft cap. They just put their toes in the water here. And then they start to count towards the cap now. What the heck was that? It just went boom. Cafe Mocha. About to get introduced to TT or MTBB. Says, not today, buddy. Man. Phoenix is winning their gun battles. And they are moving up. Is that SL? Yeah, tanks are moving up. Feeling really confident right now. Taking that hard cover. The question is, where is Kalito's tank? Do they do they know? They don't want to press the position without knowing where the opposition is. And if we're looking at the map, we're not seeing anything in the way of Axis tanks for the moment. So You know, and this is just it. You got these large open fields you have to traverse. And you want to make sure you've got fire superiority. You got somebody covering your approach in. Somebody with an MG propped up. While a couple of your guys make that, that big run. And Commando, he's one of your guys you want to look out for. He's just, he's, he's the guy that's going to make it painful. He's going to make it hurt. Yeah, so what great, first of all, he's got a little bit of concealment with the bushes. He's got a little bit of hard cover if he gets shot at with the stone wall. So this guy's in a great position, and he's just going to have a field day. Great positioning. Again, if the tanks can somehow launch a couple HE rounds, and, and, and this is what needs to be said right here. The tank needs to help out. The infantry. Infantry is pinned. And it's because of Commando's effectiveness. I mean, he's just doing a hell of a job. Now, the tank is sitting right here. And I'm not... I just don't know why. Rotate that, that turret, my friend. You've got squad leader and an MG. I think he's going to... I think he might see the MG. If he sees the tracers again, Brown might be coming out. Pulls that trigger. T.L. Ken might have just got his attention a little bit. Now he's backing up. So we're locked in a little bit of a stalemate. This is kind of about what I expected. When you have two evenly matched teams going head to head, you know, these type of matches are, are what happen. You know, um, nobody wants to make that, that false move and, and, you know, get themselves out of position because losing WN7 and getting it back, we all know it's probably one of the hardest strong points to get back, maybe other than, say, like West Bend on Foy. So they don't want to stretch themselves too thin. And I know they have Garrison up in, in, in G4, but I think these guys on the back line, Pop, Silly Little, are looking to just take whatever back garrisons they have in and around the sector on Hill 5. Got Bombing Run coming to our front. I 
think that... Did it not take out tank? No, it didn't. 76 escapes that bombing run. So... And, and SLs are still up. Fieldy, still up. Once again, we gotta go map. Again, there's just clearly a line right here between the F and the G. Nobody's really too interested in pushing at the moment. The resource situation is 90 across the board for TL. They're plus 90. Munitions are 138. Manpower 333. And the fuel is at 740. So their their resource generation is, is top notch. And when you have 800 fuel, you're doing pretty well. Just keep those tanks in the game as long as you can and let those fuels just continue to grow. And then you can have three tigers or whatever you're trying to do. So that is Garrison and is marked out by Coltrane. That's as accurate as can be. Now, can artillery drop around and take that out? There we go, knocked. Oh, did we just lose knock? What just happened there? Oh, there he is. Hobbs with the drop on the SL. And knock gets taken out by uh, White Death. And we have. 7 6 is moving up. Question is. Atrocity boss man, Mr. Do, are, I think, just waiting for him to enter that kill zone. So let's see what happens. It's going to get interesting real quick. I think they're just probably hiding. And there they are just above. So the question is, when, when they break... Where, where is the line of sight? I, I don't think you want to move too much further up. Until you get definite. And look, if anything, that, that down 75 would tell you, yeah, that's not safe. There has to be. Once again, let's see, we have 509th Coyote Rogue snipers trying to do their job with Dark Ninja, an SL, believe it or not, trying to take down the artillery. So let's just go take a look at artillery. I know we don't shout them out as much, but let's take a look at, there's my boy, Soul Raver. So let's take a quick little peek at what, and this is hard. This is definitely a difficult task to keep your artillery online. They've, they've, so they've used the transport trucks. They've got, looks like two guns up and running. So that, that, that's pretty effective. That's, you know, but here's Dark Ninja trying to do his job. Now, he's just painting tanks as they come out of Maine. There's my cast mate. Let's see what's he up to. Bush Wookie in peeking. What's he doing? Trying to get the drop on. Yeah, these guys are just out here probing, just seeing what's up, seeing if they can get get in. I mean, we're just this is the soft cap. So TL Pepper Squad is, you know, in the active sector on Hill Five. Now, if he can have a lot of success. Carlo Pan is right in his face. Takes Pepper down, but TL gets Krylo. Question is, where is, is OP still up for TL Pepper? If it is, Mr. Leroy, are you up? No, Mr. Leroy's taking a dirt nap over there. So it looks like.
like squad versus squad on the soft cap just north of hill five here. Not much. Again, tanks are everything. I think this tank, uh, Tiger tank, will sit here more or less and suppress anything that's looking to come. They're going to force the allied Phoenix tanks to go probably across the six or even further out deep. And yeah, because you're just not going to make a, you're just not going to be able to walk in. They've got they've got this whole area covered. And wait a minute, I just said that. Did he just get satcheled? He's no longer here? Did he get deleted? Curious. This is where the majority of the hard fighting has been going on. Now... Down goes AT gun. Hobbs gets a little work in. White Death. He's got a, got a tough mission. I mean, I don't know where he's heading, but that's not the direction I'd go. Just give you an idea. They're, they're definitely trying to come in from the top. I think that's the, the safest bet. You Just going straight across the 7 or the 8, not likely. You definitely need to get garrisons above your um, opponent and work your way down into WN7. And I think TL recognizes that. You've got some of your best fighters in Inferno. You've got Streets, you've got Knocked. These guys are all up north. You need to control the trenches in and around Chapel. I think if it's gonna be effective, if their attack succeeds, Team Phoenix needs to come up top with this infantry by chapel and work their way down. Don't don't get baited into those long engagements. That's just not Kalito and Mr. Dew, they just know they know their areas. You're not gonna you're not gonna bait them out. I'm not sure what the move is. It's interesting. There's a cluster of TL players all the way at the bottom of the eight by Uncle Red. And there's nothing in the way of attack presence for Hill 5. Now, I'm not sure if TL is getting pressed in a little bit. Let's go over to, like, F5 somewhere. Maybe it's, maybe it's because of the progress these guys are making up top. Yeah, Chapel, again, launch off point. You need Chapel in order to get down into WN7. As you can see, we're right above Chapel, and WN7 is about 624 meters away. Yeah, this is, this is a very nice box out for TL. Keep the tanks on the, on the 8 at the bottom of the map. Take any infantry that's even brave enough to try and come across. But send most of your killers up top to Chapel. Yeah, this is fullback. Yeah, this is some of the best gunfighters here in this, in this match today. Let's jump on with him see where he takes us. Come on, fullback. Let's eat. Let's go get paid. Stepping over one of his German ally or uh, adversaries. Popping the rocket. Up we go. Controlling this building. This is a very important building. Great vantage point. Oh, we get shot. Ghoster in fullback trade, Lazy H, who's not in the tank today. I'm sure he knows how to fire that, guys. I 
Again, you know, this is just your your classic prevent defense. Can can TL hold it for a majority? I mean, they have to hold it for the whole match. I don't think they're really too interested at this point in going for Hill 5. Now... To be fair, I remember this was a strategy that Phoenix had on their match against the Finns on Carantan, and they held that midpoint, was it rail station or something, for an hour and 20, and literally in the last f uh, 10 minutes of the match, the constant pressure, and they finally folded, and they wound up losing that match. So, you know, what's TL planning to do? You gotta at least have the threat of putting that back pressure on. So, let me just swing this around. Again, we're in the north up by Chapel. That yeah, Chapel just in the distance. Now we do have a new tank, Panzer IV coming up. Mr. Dew is in, in the house. And this is gonna be fun. Here we go. We got the little stew. Oh, what in the hell? Little Stewart needs to back off. And it appears he's just doing some mop-up work up top. The atrocity. He's your... Stewart is bugging out. Panzer IV has him in sight. He's on the hunt. On the hunt. Smell it. It's in the water. Here it comes. Here comes the boom. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> Made too much noise over there, Stewie. Yeah, I mean, action is, like I said, not in your face. They're not throwing bodies. It's not a meat grinder like a like a Purple Heart Lane. There, there is some serious tactics. And that intel that you get or don't get will determine where your attack is going to be. And I'm not sure if Phoenix quite has, you know, that plan yet. Maybe they're still formulating, hey, let's wait for the the tanks to spawn. We'll, we'll roll up with dual 76s. Just infantry hold the line. Artillery will help. Something is, is, is being planned for sure. And here's our guy. Jesus, oh, taking the bad one with the artillery round. That's the uh, defensive coordinator for uh, my man Soul Reaver. Hey, bloody nine, it's your time. Let's go, bloody. For the lean, lean for the win. How deep are these guys? They're in the soft cap. I'm trying to gain those busted up trenches. Taking shots. He's been he's been seen. He's just gonna lay. Lay down. Lay down, boy. You're the only game in town. So yeah, it's going to take a concerted effort to get, because it looks like Phoenix has quite a nice little defense set up on Hill 5. Again, just biding their time, I think, just waiting. Oh 
Bloody knife finally goes down. Cafe Mocha, Dingleberry Streets. What in the world? We have a 76. Fairly injured 76. Just got pinged. Something's deep. Uh oh. Thank Jesus has got you in sights. Short on that round. I think. I think Kalito gets that. Some weird things happening in this this admin camera. Very strange. Anyway, this this group of guys. Taco, streets, sieves, chicken and waffles, some heavy hitters. And not not to be outdone, you've got knocked. Yeah, this looks like a full press. They're, they're, they're really starting to converge. This, and it's just as soon as I say that, that's what's exactly happening. Fourth point is now getting flexed. And tanks are moving up, and that's a sign somebody gave the call. You know, maybe Coltrane, our commander, he's like, hey man, it's go time. Let's start pinching this noose a little bit tighter. Is this bombing run? Here's something. Wait for it. That is, ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. That is a Phoenix bombing run. And just where I said they wouldn't come up from, they're trying to make that progress on the bottom of the map. And they have breached those choke points. One squad leader. Not a lot in the way of defense. Now this is where TL needs to be careful. Got Daniel, 32-32 coming back. He's an SL. Smoke coming in from Phoenix. This looks very promising. Very promising. They've flashed. And now we're going to see if we're going to get a big redeploy. At least one, perhaps maybe two SLs need to return back to WN7. I think that might also... Yeah, and that's going to draw the attention of the Tiger. Tiger tank now. Well played. Timing was right on. T well, right on time. <laughs> now we're going to shift back over because right before Team Phoenix flashed WN7, the line was making nice progress on Hill 5. And with this supply drop, Chicken and Waffles is going to be able to build Garrison. Just needs to get placed correctly. And I think TL going to be in, in a great position now. They've already started to move Hill 5. Come on, chicken. Find that spot. Let's go. Come on. Take up pocket watch out already, will you? And there it goes down. Or should I say up? Garrison is up for TL in, in the salt. So yes, that is a soft cap. And here's the move. Here's the move. This is where communication is everything. The line is losing their mid. Now, we have one tank, Kalito. Now, boss man was the other. I want to say, yeah, boss man. Mr. Do and Atrocity are sitting. So they've got their Tigers split up, one attacking, one in defense. So we're going to roll with these boys right here. And if you don't deal with this Tiger tank, with, with this infantry now swarming in the backside, we've got Noct, who's an SL, in the point. Grenades being chucked in. They can gain possession 
of these trenches. DL Stevens making his way. Contempt. Monk Monk sliding with Inferno. This is this 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 is looking nice strafing run. Soul Raver with the hell of a strafing run. Great job. I think he might have got two with that. He might have got Monk Monk as well. Fantastic placement. However, Ghoster, Mange, Taco, Chicken and Waffles, all these guys. Chicken and Waffles is in there. Chicken and Waffles, let's go. Game on. Here it is. Here's the fight. TL has the trenches. They have the preferred positions. And now Team Phoenix is having to scramble and hustle to get in. Do have tank out in the distance. Now Kalito's tank is also so that allied tank needs to be careful not to stick itself out and expose it. Nice healthy spawn wave from Phoenix. Now what do they do with this? You know, can they clean up? It's it's right here. If the tank has success, this point, and I don't like what, what they're doing uh, with the tank, because now you've effectively, you have no lines of sight. So you're stuck. I think you press it a little bit too tight, and it looks like Team Phoenix, as we can just see, they're pushing and defending the strong point. Now something just went booming. Is that Kalito? That was the direction of where he was. That was a, that some uh, Sherman medium just went dead. Maybe Kalito swung around and caught that one. Did not see that. But we have a fight. We have a major fight going on. Artillery, if TL can dial up a couple timely shots and take out this infantry that's coming in from the north of Hill 5, you know, and they can secure the bottom half of Hill 5 with artillery, this could go... Definitely could go TL's way, especially with Kalito, or not Kalito, we've got a, a yes, that is Kalito's thing. Digging himself in a ditch. Full back with the, with the rocket over, overshoots it. Wow, we were just saying about artillery, how about that? Right on time, that right there might have been the shot that springs this for TL. Huge artillery. And that's our guy, Xyphoid. I say his name wrong all the time. He's going to punch me for that. I'm sorry. Wow. Did you just see that? Missed the satchel by seconds. TL appears to be in in control of this strong point. Question is, the soft cap. No, oh, and they have a big spawn. Phoenix still in this fight. They just contested. Ipsil with the OP. Now he's going to bug out. Wow, another nice strafing run. Man, can can uh, can TL hang in there? Or excuse me, can Phoenix hang in there? They're they're contesting, they're throwing everything they got into this. They don't want to go down four one, but it doesn't look like it's going to be. Let's get ready. Get ready for it. There it is. We got the boom.
four one. Let's pop that scoreboard up for you. Four one. Back at it. TL with a nice combined arms effort, led by Kalito and his tank and, and some real, real nice infantry play. That is, I want to say, not, not a cap that T or, uh, Phoenix can contest. It looks like they have to reset. And they're coming from their back point, which is, let's get a, Uncle Red, and Uncle Red just flashed. Oh my, that is not their back point. They are off. And here we have Uncle Red as our fifth and final point. Streets, Taco Tastic, Gil, Sando, who is that other guy? Shame. Shame. Mr. Dingleberry. Man, that's a nice group of guys running in through those trenches. And we've got dual cap progress going on right now. I'm going to monitor this both because it does look like TL has the slight edge in the cap race. Yeah, and it looks like the fourth point, uh, Hill 5, is being reclaimed by TL. And progress is still being made on Uncle Red here for TL. I, yeah, I think, man, you, you release the hounds and you send them all in. This is going to be tough now. The garrison, we have a half track spawn. We've got. Squad leaders, oh, it's not looking, it's not looking promising at the moment. Not looking promising at all for, for Phoenix at the moment. I'm not, I'm not seeing or hearing any tank play. It's going to come down, can the infantry, these guys are just waiting. We've got Taco-tastic. Here he is, Taco-tastic. What, what are you up to over here, Taco? Here's your moment. Are you kidding me? Just standing around waiting to get shot? You know you, know you don't have a medic? Taco. And that's about a 5-0. It looks like definite. A big spawn, though. Can that big spawn save? Can they get? I don't think it's, it's not in the cards today. There it was. We got a 5-0 in relatively, I want to say, mm, wasn't completely easy. They did work for it, but um, pretty impressive. TL coming back, Cold Train leading the charge. Um, they did make their adjustments. Um, everything that, chicken and waffles, pretty good game. Hey, Sibs, look at that 400 combat effect in this monster game. You know, Whatever adjustments they made on this map from the trigger match, you, you could definitely see was a much more organized, disciplined TL team. They really didn't look like they were threatened at any point. I, I know they did flash WN7 for a moment, but it, this, this was pretty much, you know, a textbook way of handling it. Kalito, 3,000, that's about the standard. If you can get 3K with your tanks, um, that's definitely a good day. Boss Man, uh, Atrocity, Mr. Do, they were mostly in defense. So th those guys, they were pulling back duty fullback. Nice game, 250. Uh, how else? About 400 from Captain Germany. He's one of the uh, artillery guys, if I remember correctly. Um, Soul Raver was mentioning him. How, how else did this, this roll out? Yeah, but, you know, scores look pretty good. I mean, Recon, you know, everybody looked like they, I don't know. Don't know, but... Impressive fashion, TL coming back after a uh, tough loss last Yeah, so there you have it. Um, pretty awesome, pretty awesome display. TL looks like they got their shit together. Um, and as for Phoenix, uh, I guess there's a lot to, you know, you take away from this. Um, they definitely struggled. They definitely struggled. They didn't really look like they were... Um, like really, really in this. I don't know if it was the tankers, 
and the infantry not uh, communicating well. I, I just, they were just having all types of problems. So I think, I think uh, that top part of chapel, uh, we'll just pull it up real quick. Um, if they control that top half, let's just grab the map real quick. So again, chapel, uh, and we had Hill 5 as the, uh, as the point, so it was Hill 5 and, and WN7. Um, you, if you don't control Chapel and it's adjacent Hill 5, they, they really never had control of Chapel. And I think the tanks were trying to come across the 7 and the 8 most of the time and engaging it. And that wasn't a winning strategy, I thought. Coming from Hill 5 to Chapel and then working your way down, Right, and just leaving this whole area of GH78, just leave it alone, even though uh, WN5, or no, it was WN5, it was Hill, Hill 5 was the point. Yeah, I would have just left this whole entire area down south uh, alone and sent most of my attacking force over and down and just left, you know, a defensive squad in the six. I, I'd have to go back and see um, C Raptors' uh, perspective for exactly how Team Phoenix played. So, you know, it's always fun to look back at other people's VODs and you can just, you know, run them simultaneously and kind of just see what was going on uh, for, for both teams anyway. Um, so with that win, that puts, that puts, let's get these guys up. That puts TL back one and one. So they're now in this, this, this group and who else is gonna be in there? Uh, well, Core's going two and oh. Um, you know, so yeah, there's there's a ton of games going on, guys. I mean, there's really not much else. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, all the other games are going on right now as we speak. So um, just looking to end this real quick and jump on some of the other casts. I'm sure uh, some of the other games will be going the full 90, and this one this one didn't. So there's probably about 30 minutes of gameplay and a lot of those others. So definitely check those out. Um, you know, obviously a big thanks. I just want to shout out uh, the Wolves of War for putting this spring season together. Some really awesome matches, great teams. I enjoy casting this. And uh, yeah, definitely make sure you subscribe, follow, whatever you guys want to do. HLL Gadarian. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the next cast. And you have a good one, guys. Take it easy.